Hello, Gaston County. Welcome to episode number 98 of Gaston's Great, a podcast highlighting some of the great things happening in and around Gaston County. I'm your host, Stephen Long, for some reason, and we are coming to you once again from the international headquarters of GSM Services right here in downtown Gastonia. We seem to believe in discussing more of the reasons why Gaston's great. We are highlighting another great organization this week as we highlight Serenity Pastoral Counseling. We have Shelton Davis with us today, who is the executive director and pastoral psychotherapist of the organization. Shelton, it's great to have you on, and welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Stephen. I appreciate it so much. So full disclosure, um, I guess we met, I met Shelton. I knew of Shelton, and my family knew of Shelton, but I met Shelton um, a couple of years ago now, and I have to admit it was on April 8th of 2021, which was not the greatest day in the life of GSM. However, um, like along with so many of our teammates here, um, Shelton had a real positive impact on us and our company, and um, I've got to really know her and her family since then. So that was one of the reasons, uh, selfishly, I wanted to have her on the podcast. So she's doing some good work here. So um, as always, we'd like to get right to it, Shelton. So just first off, before we get into you know, maybe Serenity Pastoral Counseling. Just tell us a little bit about yourself, anything you'd like to share. Well, thanks so much for having me on. Um, I'm excited to be here. A little nervous. Um, it's my first podcast, but I, everybody seems so awesome. Good. So um, I, uh, my husband and I, uh, my, my name is Shelton Davis, and I have been here in Gaston County for 22 years. My husband, Justin, is one of your Superior Court judges. So um, after a 17, 16, 17-month campaign, I, I feel like I, I have – one of the things I'm excited about is that I can tell you lots and lots of great things about Gaston County. <laughs> that, is, that has been, um, that was one of the pleasures of that campaign, and, and having had a school board campaign before that, I we got some some experience in it, but the, it was a really good, really good time. We have two kids, um, our daughter Avery, um, who is a rising senior at Highland, and then our son Henry, who is a rising freshman at Highland, um, so it'll be Nice to have them in the same school. We're originally from Matthews, but have chosen to spend our entire adult lives here. Um, Gaston County literally drew, drew us in with um, really small towns and great people. Um, and so uh, we've been here for a while. All right. Well, very good. And um, I will say that uh, I have Justin and Shelton, for some reason, felt um, compelled to allow me to help to help usher Henry through confirmation um, here locally, and I've developed a great relationship uh, with Henry, and for some reason they want to let me hang around and, 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 and chill out with Henry, Henry on occasion. So it's been, been a good, uh, it's been a great experience. So tell us, here's the big question, right, is tell us about Serenity Pastoral Counseling. What's the mission? You know, uh, how did you end up where you are? I think before we started recording, I really like the word you use. You use the word calling. And which is we we've heard that a lot with a lot of the organizations, people we've talked to over the previous ninety seven episodes. So I'll just let you have have the mic and and share anything that you would like to share about it. Okay, great. Well, thank you. Um, Serenity Pastoral Counseling was established in November of twenty twenty one. I have been doing pastoral counseling in Gaston County. Ooh, uh, how old Henry? Uh, he's fourteen. So thirteen years. Um, but I was with a different organization that's no longer operating in the county. Um, but now at this point, um, Serenity, I have offices uh, here in Gastonia at First Methodist in, uh, in, in Gastonia and, uh, easy to remember, at First Methodist in Belmont. Um, and so I spend different days of the week in different spots just for the convenience of my clients. And um, pastoral counseling is, is a passion of mine, and we talk a little bit about what, what that means in a minute. But um, I felt called uh, here I, in uh, grad school had worked, um, I was in Richmond, Virginia in my Master's of Divinity program, um, and I had always, I had felt called into chaplaincy. That was something that I had felt called into in, in college. Um, did a little bit of work, uh, okay, a lot of work, um, on weekends doing some call chaplaincy up there, and I had worked for a gentleman uh, there who had come back home to Gastonia because his parents were here. Um, his name was Mike Johnston, and Mike was the lead chaplain at Gaston Memorial for years, and okay. uh, Ran into him at a conference, and I said, what are you doing here? He said, well, I was actually kind of looking for you. I've found a, a job for you, and I, I, this was at the end of my, my graduate program. And I said, you want to move You want to move back towards home? He knew where home was for me, and I said, yeah, I want a job. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, those jobs are hard to come by. And so um, I came to Gaston County and worked at Gaston Memorial as oncology and cardiology chaplain. Um, and I loved that job. But it's a spiritual emergency room um, that we ca- I got to come alongside people of all faiths, mm-hmm. 
and walk with them in some really dark and terrible times. Um, I also got, um, I also kind of thought of it as, as pastoring a really large church um, uh, <laughs> because we had a lot of members who were our staff and then we had a lot of visitors who were our patients and family and families. And so that was sort of how I got my start in Gaston County. Um, but as the years went by, I ended up um, getting to go and, and help start Presby Huntersville and I liked that all right, but I I just kept feeling drawn back to Gaston County. And one of the things that I was drawn by was the fact that we um, didn't have a lot of places to send our folks that came to our spiritual emergency room, you know, as far as our, you know, those that that had lost loved ones, those who were struggling with lots and lots of different things in life. Um, And and I was was tired of emotionally and spiritually bandaging bandaging people up and hoping and praying that someone was going to take care of them out there. And so for me, coming back to Gaston County uh, to work, that, that was a really short stint that I worked outside of Gaston County, um, it felt like calling to be here and to provide that kind of care because, you know, folks in our county weren't exactly excited about going to, um, they, weren't, they weren't crazy about going across the river for counseling. Um, and and we, many, didn't, we, don't, we didn't want to go to the gateway to Gastonia, right? Right. No, 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 no. I know. I know. Look, we we really folks didn't want to folks didn't want to leave our county. Yeah, to I, do I understand that. Yes, and so and folks, um, many of them felt more comfortable inside of a church, whether it was their church or not. They knew it was a church, and they, it, was, it was part of their um, experience um, it, to have comfort in a church. And so, to work and function out of two churches in our county has been really good. Um, I am actually an ordained. An ordained minister. I'm actually ordained in the Global Methodist Church, but um, and so, I, but I, I work out of um, two United Methodist churches, and and in that space, um, I feel like the calling has been to meet people where they are spiritually, and so that's what Serenity Pastoral Counseling really is about: is about meeting people where they are emotionally, and if they choose to bring their focus into, if they choose to bring their their religion or their faith into into that space. Um, I walk alongside them. So we talked a little bit beforehand, so that's really good. And just also, um, I'm a member, my family's member, First United Methodist Church has been for, gosh, 25 years now. Um, so, that, so yeah, our, our son is 24. We were pregnant with him um, when uh, when we started at a church because of the great youth program there. So so that is uh, my original connection with uh, our family's original connection with Shelton and, and her family. Um so when you started this, why, I'm not sure this is a great question, but why the nonprofit route? Why, you know, when you talk about calling and, and so why, why go that route? Well, it, it, I think it, I think God speaks in a lot of ways. And for me, God spoke to me in, in, in early in my career, um, everyone, you know, when you're in a hospital, everybody wears the same outfit. Um, whether that's staff, generally everybody's kind of wearing the same kind of scrubs, or if it's your patients, they're all wearing the same outfit. And that means that you don't see higher, you don't see lower, you don't see who's got something and who doesn't. Um, and for me, I, I, this is calling because I can't turn somebody away from an ability to pay. Understood. Um, and so I fundraise year round so that I don't ever have to say no. Um, just yesterday, I changed two fees where folks' economic conditions had changed. That's not a problem. The one thing that I believe is that counseling should never stress you out more. And so if the financial aspect of counseling is stressing you out more, we have a problem. So that's why I fundraise year round. And so I never have to do, I never have to say no. And I never have to, you know, my, my, my spoiled kids have gotten used to eating. So I, I do enjoy making sure that they can continue to do that and have a roof over their heads. But that's, that's important to me is making sure that we never have to say no. Have you, so thinking about the date, right? And you started in 2021 officially with this um, organization. Mm-hmm. Have you seen, um, I'm going off, off um, agenda here, but we've had this come up, you know, with all the the previous 97 episodes, we kind of had this come up every now and then, depending on who we're talking to, but have you seen since, I don't like to say the word COVID anymore, Mm -hmm. have you seen like what we've heard mostly from around the world, around the country, have you seen a spike, I'm not sure that's the right word, but more need for what you're providing um, since then, or is it we just become more aware of it, maybe. I think we've definitely become more aware of it. Yes, there's definitely, if we look at the studies, there's an increase. Okay. Um, for me, I feel like, 
Um, people are more aware of their needs, and people are more able to say, yeah, I'm going to jump in. Okay. Um, I don't feel like my numbers changed very much as far as the number of people I'm able to see because there are okay. only so many hours in the week. Well, sure. Um, and I was, I was kind of full before, and I'm, I'm full now, but, you know, it's not like I, – and I, I think that's – you know, reflective of how long you've been in some place, people actually kind of learn. Okay, yeah, yeah, we go to Shelton; that'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for me, what I what really has shifted is people. Um, people are making it a greater priority to come in and do their counseling, and whether they physically come in or they come in virtually, I, I offer a virtual backup session um, for every one of my sessions. I started doing virtual sessions way back before the pandemic. Um, because I saw a bunch of college kids at the time, and mom and dad would notice that they were down or they were anxious over the summer. They'd, cu- they'd start with me, and then they wouldn't want to change when they went back to school. So, And they're very comfortable with virtual, as you oh, know. Yeah. You know they're, yeah. they're college kids. They they do everything with the screen in front of them. Um, so that beca- it has become more of a priority, and so folks will, you know, folks may say, yeah, I want to continue, but I'm, I'm moving three hours away, you know, three hours east in North Carolina. Okay, that doesn't bother me. Let's continue virtually. So um, the prioritization is probably the biggest shift I've okay. seen. There's definitely more anxiety about certain things, but I'm starting to see that taper a little bit um, where we're back to sort of a, an original uh, set of anxiety, depression, sort of the garden variety human experience. Sure. Um, these, are, these are normal things. Um, yeah, I mean, life is, to cope with. Yeah. life is life, right? Life is hard. <laughs> yeah, it can be. It sure can be. Um, I'm not, you know, this is a question that we typically ask because, again, I have to stick to a script that Naomi gives me because I'm not a professional. She's the only professional, um, well, podcaster in the room, and you're the only other professional in the room. So, But if we used to phrase initiatives or maybe the day in the life or, you know, I'm not sure the best way to describe that. It's kind of what can you tell us uh, about that or how, how do individuals find you? Um, is it typically through the church? Is it typically – a events you're going to okay <laughs> a little bit of everything um i think that's been the surprising thing you know i'll, I'll be you know it, it might be an insurance company which we take you know i take a couple of insurance plans well a lot more than a couple but um, it might be through an insurance company it might be through the church um okay it's it's ways though the greatest compliment that i can get though is is if i have a client refer another client sure that's the one where i'm like that's that's where you feel like okay i'm doing a decent job um, but, and so it's, it could be that, but then I'll, I'll be at an event and somebody will say, now tell me about the kind of counseling you do. And very rarely is that they're just interested in the kind of counseling. A lot of times they'll be like, okay, so I'm going to need your card because my niece needs this or my, you know, my friend who lives next door needs it, or I, I need something. So, um, I find that that's often, you know, another connection point. Now it's really about knowing your community. Like I, I used to supervise, um, some of our, our younger clinicians when I was at a different agency. And, uh, you know, if they weren't going to live where they worked, I said, hey, you got to spend a lot of time there. You got to go to the barbecue joints and hang out. You got to spend, you got to meet people. Um, and that's yeah, really yeah. the. Yeah, I mean, anything that's connected to a community, um, you got to, you almost have to live there. Right. Um, well, counseling is yeah. very relational, right? Yeah. I mean, if somebody, if somebody can't see themselves sitting in a room with you and telling you the things that are difficult, um, it's really hard to, uh, to build a practice group. Um, so that's. That's where I feel comfortable is here with, with my guests and people. <laughs> How about, um, I like this question, and obviously, you know, we always preface it with any successes, I- impacts you've seen. Um, obviously, we're not going to get any into specifics, but can you talk about that? Maybe, you know. Um, yeah, I'll say, like, uh, as far as, um, I'll kind of tie it in because I don't think I answered your mission question very well. Uh, it's Our mission is to help clients find serenity and healing and wholeness through pastoral counseling and uh, pastoral counseling the sort of the definition of it is the integration of evidence-based psychological interventions with client-led spirituality so if a client wants to bring their spirituality in combining that with evidence-based psychological um, interventions and so that is kind of like braiding Um, it's, it's 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 weaving a lot of things into into one thing and and um, as far as successes, when you, my greatest hope is that I will work myself out of a job. Right. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I joke about that because I, and I think God has a sense of humor because I am a planner, <laughs> um, as you can tell, because I have a 
ridiculous yeah, she, notes here. She has 53 pages of notes <laughs> that she brought to prep, to prep for this. Well, it, I'm a planner, and I think that's why God giggles at me and is like, let me give you a job where you can't predict what's going to yeah, walk in the door in the next hour or the one after that or the one after that. Yeah. Um, and so that's where, for me, it's important to uh, to be prepared with, with, with you know, interventions, but it's also important to be able to listen to people where they are and just, you know, find where they are and go there with them um, because it's, you know, it's hard to say and do cer- certain things with loved ones, with friends, with coworkers. Sometimes it's really tough to say some of those things. So um, it's to just meet folks where they are. And um, as far as our initiatives, I, you know, I, I write grants and things like that. I get, you yeah, know, yeah. I, I do those things to make sure that I can always, you know, provide in the client assistance fund. I've got, I've got a Sunday school class that loves to contribute from Charlotte that wants me to go teach. They want me to lecture um, over in, over in Charlotte. Wow. And they want me to lecture and I go over there several times a year and get to meet with these folks that know a lot more about the Bible than I do because they're all in their eighties and nineties. And, um, but that's, that's one of those initiatives that also sure. works out. And then so success is both, you know, being able to fundraise. So I never have to say no, but success really at the end of the day is watching people walk away and say, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. I, oh, yeah. I, um, and I always say, you know, you go with my prayers and, and, uh, I know you can always come back, but you know, I had a client send me some images of uh, a really special event in her life um, about a month ago, and it was something that neither one of us, when we'd been in the darkest parts of her um, counseling, could have ever predicted would have happened, and it was just the greatest feeling of, you don't need me at all. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's really, the, that's the success. That's the, that's so your ultimate goal is to be fired. Right. My ultimate goal is to work myself out of a job. Okay, well, that's yep. good. Yep. Um, so I have spent some time on the website, and um, I'm going to ask a really dumb question. The fact, I, I really like the fact that the serenity prayer is on there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's something that I, if you look back through my journals, I'm sure you can find it, gosh, more than once. Um, because for me, that is such a, is that where the name came from? Mm-hmm. Okay. It is. Sorry, it is. Um, seems obvious now that I've been on the website. and <laughs> I had two loved ones who, who both, who both uh, put that out there as I was making this plan. Um, and trying to figure out where to go with this. And when two people that I very much admire, and, and uh, Henry was the first one. He, was, he said, Mom, what about serenity? I was like, okay. Um, and so both said it independent of one I another. I should have known that. Yeah, he's a, he's a pretty wise kid yes, um, yes. at 14. Now, he still doesn't know where his shoes are half the time, but <laughs> bless his heart, he's a wise kid. Um, so anyway, th- but those are... When two folks sort of throw that at you, and then right. I started thinking about serenity prayer, and started thinking about that's kind of the ethos of of how you know I function. I in in therapy, I help people find those places. Uh, grief and loss, um, having been a hospital chaplain, is a big part of what I understand to be a normal human experience. I don't sure. I don't pathologize that, and uh, there's a lot of the serenity prayer that goes with with grief and loss. Yeah, I think <laughs> when I read that or write it in my journal or whatever. I, I think I still say, okay, still aspirational, but I'm working on it. <laughs> it is. Uh, yeah, I it's mean, it, it is something that, uh, and, and you get to be my age, um, gosh, you know, you, you, you can't, you're, you're going to have dealt with something, a family member. You, you mentioned oncology, right? So um, you can't get to be 52 like I am with, without being touched. And most, matter of fact, this day and time, you could probably be 20 and you have been touched by cancer in some way or some loss or some, you know, my, one, one of the guys I like to follow, and I've probably said this on multiple podcasts, but is Andy Andrews, an author I really like. And one of his things is we're either coming out of a crisis, in the middle of a crisis, or about to get into another crisis. Mm-hmm. So there's just always something going on. And I think that's just um, that's just the way it is. And when I've started coming to terms with that, it, you know, frankly, makes deal, dealing with some things uh, a little better. But then there's always these really other potentially traumatic or other things that, that can occur. So I appreciate you sharing that. And again, I, I am a big fan of the serenity prayer in, in general. So um, it fits or seems to fit for me. So um, Shelton, looking ahead, um, you know, that classic question is five or 10 years down the road, but what do you see the future for serenity uh, pastoral counseling? You know, that was probably the toughest one of these questions to prepare for. <laughs> um, at the moment, I'm kind of enjoying being, being a solo practitioner. Um, it, okay. there, there are some opportunities there and I, 
I think one of the things that it, I'm drawn back to that idea of call and what I am called to and sort of those other roles of calling. Um, you know, like I said, my kids are in that that stage of we're very involved at the moment, but we can see that time when, when sure. they'll be, you know, off in college doing their own thing. And um, it's it's hard to say if I would, you know, hire somebody at this point, hire somebody. Right. Um, I have some ideas about some spaces that I have, though, which, which get me excited about the potential for hiring, say, a play therapist or somebody who, who could do a different type of work that would be um, good in concert with, with what I do, um, a different type of work, but still um, – want to be able to come alongside people in that pastoral sense. Okay, so good. Yeah, another thing that I, that you mentioned earlier, we were talking that I didn't kind of wanted to come back to is you, because I've had this discussion, we've had discussion a couple of times on different episodes, is you kind of heard God talking and the calling and you actually answered. I know that I've, I'm afraid I've heard God talking to me and I've ignored him <laughs> uh, on occasion. So I actually think that's... Um, Congratulations, maybe, or, or thank you, right? I mean, because so I think so many people, <laughs> I think so many people like me um, don't want to listen to that, and and for whatever reasons, I mean, we got somebody sitting over here who I think has answered uh, the call as well, um, and maybe that's why we should do it just an episode on you, Naomi. Um, but anyway, well, we can talk about that later. So, so again, it, with with that in uh, in mind. You know, again, this is a podcast about Gaston County, and you've already shared a lot of reasons. But I'm going to ask to make you answer the question anyway. Why is Gaston County, this area, the citizens, people you've dealt with, why is Gaston County better because Serenity Pastoral Counseling is here? That's a that's a tough one for me to answer because I feel like I'm I'm kind of it as far as the the group. But I think that you have to answer what anyway. I saw. Well, I know. I'm trying, Stephen. Um, one of the things that, that struck me when I I, I got to go back. I'm, I'm narrative in my thought process, so forgive me. I got to answer it with a story. That's all right. Um, when I first came to Gaston County, um, folks at certain levels of the hospital, you know, those jobs that nobody really gets excited about, maybe empty in trash, maybe empty in bedpans, those things that are – those people make the hospital run. They really do. Um but when I first came to Gaston County, they often didn't expect to be spoken to by somebody who came from a physician's office, chaplain's office, anything, anywhere. Um, and it, it has been, I, I hope, this has been my, my hope since the early days of being a chaplain, now being a, a pastoral psychotherapist, is, is to allow folks to talk about the hard things in places where they feel safe and that they can, they can find some hope and some healing. And I pray that that's what we provide because I watched that shift because they knew that that annoying little chaplain girl was going to say hey to them in the hallway. <laughs> and that was what we were going to be. We, we were going to say hey, and then I was going to get to know your grandkids' names. And I was you know, like, yeah. that's, that's one of the things I feel like um, I've been trying to break down some barriers to mental health, to getting to the place where you can talk about what's hard. Um, because if you if you want to great if you we'll try not to preach too much but if you want to look at the the best pastoral counselor just open up your new testament and find Jesus i mean like there's a lot of people who talk to him and that's one of the places that that i felt very comfortable and called was trying to sort of open that door to um, letting people talk about what was hard because we've been given this sort of gift of being able to as we talk about things we actually feel better a lot of times so that's that's sort of a long way of saying, you know, what is better about it. I hope that more people are more able to talk through the hard things um, and not turn to um, potentially negative uh, sources for um, for coping with the difficult things, you know. Well, you mean, you know, everybody's a professional on the Internet, right? Oh, yeah. Social oh, media. Yeah. I love the, the, the ones that I see who are one day they're the professional on – the dichotomy in Russia, and then the next day they're professional on the pandemic. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's great, isn't it? I, I'm a professional uh, on nothing, and nor do I exist on social media. Yeah. I have a website. That's it. Uh, <laughs> so um, who would, do, you, do you have a, a niche of client, or is it, is it male, female, teenager, or is there a niche that you happen to have? Or that? Okay, I love, I'm, I'm not a specialist. I, I will okay. say grief and loss is probably a subspecialty of Understood. mine. Understood. Okay. But that, again, doesn't sort of um, 
come with a, a particular type of person, everybody's going to have to go through grief and loss. Um, so I do love I do love working with that anxiety, depression. Um, gotcha. Uh, work with some couples. Um, I used to work more with teenagers, but now that I have teenagers and I'm trying to always make all the sports and do all those things, I've found that those schedules don't really match up very well. Um, so yeah, fair enough. Mostly yeah. adults at this point. Um, okay. But I love um, I love the variety um, because there are no two hours that are the same. Um, I saw two folks before I came here this morning, vastly different things going on in their lives, and I never have a boring day. Um, occasionally, I'll have I'll have find ways that that I it seems like themes pop up, but they're not necessarily um, subspecialties. It's just things that I sort of tend to notice that are that are kind of coming together for multiple people at the same time. Um, so lots of different backgrounds. Um, I love seeing folks that are from all over the economic spectrum. I learn so much from my clients that do very different things with their lives um, and can kind of teach me those languages. This is, um, might not be a fair question either, but um, in your time doing it, not just with, with Serenity, but just your, your, your whole career, have you seen trends changing, um, things that you're seeing more consistently? Uh, you know, we, as a, as a parent, uh, 24, 22, and 17 year old, frankly, uh, phones and social media, something that has always concerned uh, us as parents. But have you seen any trends over the last 15 to 20 years of things changing or something that you're seeing more often? Or that's. Um, Lots of them. Um, okay. <laughs> some more controversial than others. Um, one of the pleasant ones that I have seen that I, that I am, I continue to be uh, pleasantly surprised by is a number of folks. Over over retirement age, and I, I use that liberally because I'd never know you know what retirement age is for different folks who are willing to come in and, and, and work in therapy. That is a delightful sure. surprise to me, particularly because I as a child um, I went to a church where um, I was one of only a few children. We had a, a, what I called a salt and pepper church. Everybody was gray haired, um, and so I grew <laughs> up with a lot of my own grandparents, but then a lot of extra folks that treated me like a grandchild. And so I love working with folks who are older because I feel like they, they bring their own experiences and wisdom and they often aren't um, lifted up um, by our society at large as people who have something valuable to contribute, but I love working with them. That's, that's one of the things that, that's been a pleasant trend for me. Of course, we've got lots and lots of other things. Um, sure. I, I think one of my fears as far as a trend goes is that we're using the words mental health in... Um, that someone's mental health is poor if they're unhappy and they're not the okay, same thing. Yeah. Um, and so that's one of my fears is that we would end up sort of um, conflating the this, two. This push for eternal happiness all the time, no matter what. There yeah. should never be any conflict, never should be any struggles. It should be, there's a, I'm in a group called F3 and uh, we have a whole thing about that that, that I won't get into here, <laughs> but because uh, I might, yeah, anyway, we don't have enough time. Um <laughs> So, so I appreciate you sharing that. That and and I, and I I would probably agree with that. Um, again, having raised to this point three children who are, as long as they stay on the path like their mother, they'll be good. Um, have you almost stereo ask the stereotype question that you hear? Have you found that the stereotype that men um, don't want to talk much about these type of things as women? Have you seen that in your career, or is that just some old wives' tale? I don't think, I think um, that's another shift. I've definitely seen more men coming in, but um, I, I, I think I'm, I'm, I see more women than I see men. Okay. Um, but I also think that women tend to be more comfortable with women. Men tend I, to be more I, comfortable I would with men. probably agree with that. And yeah, so yeah. I kind of keep a list of, of guys that I can refer to, especially if I've got a, you know, a woman coming in. She's like, well, my husband really needs to talk to somebody, but he wants to talk to a man. Okay, great. Let me hand you um, a list of, of other folks. Um, and I don't get offended by that. That's not something. Um, but I love I love working with men. A lot of times they just come in. They'll just lay it out there. Just they're not. There's no pretext. There's no. <laughs> this is what's wrong. And I, I mean, and so again, it's not no filter. Probably no filter. Sometimes. It's great. Every once in a while, they're like, "Can I cuss in here?" <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> and I have to say, the Lord will forgive you. Just be yourself. <laughs> so it's it's definitely a place where um, where we we're definitely seeing a shift in okay. that. I was just way. curious because you hear that and mm -hmm. uh, part of the group I'm in, one of the F3, part of our mission, so to speak, is to you know, get men more involved in community leadership. And part of that could be coming to terms with yourself and dealing with, you know, 
things that my experience men maybe maybe don't like to talk about with other men out in the world maybe maybe that's you know that old wife tell yeah. stereotype um so before we kind of shift gears uh shelton is there anything i haven't asked i should have asked um anything you like to share specifically on those you know 53 pages of, of notes that you brought in that we that that you want to make sure you get across this is this is one i didn't write anything down for <laughs> I think you, your your questions are pretty complete. I, I just I appreciate the the time and the opportunity. I, um, it's really nice to see Gasson County being uplifted as a, a wonderful place to be. Um, you know, growing up in Matthews, I didn't know a lot about about Gasson County. Um, and you probably heard some things about. I Gaston came County. to McHaddenville for the likes, um, <laughs> but I was I didn't know what I was missing. So. Those people, those people over there in Gasson County. Yeah, well, it's it's been a, a delightful. Um, yes, yeah. So after after having been here for twenty two years, my kids both want to. They now they're young, but they both say they they want to move move back home. They're like, Mm-mm, we move here. So um, I love it. I well, we'll see. Great. Yeah, and of course. I mean, before we finish, we'll make sure that our listeners know how to find in more information about um, the organization and and anything that any, any send questions your way or anything. So, but we do have a round of questions um, that we ask every week and or every episode, and we are going to force you to answer these questions because you've been here long enough in Gaston County. And this week, we're going to call this another crea- another really creative week. This is going to be <laughs> the serenity speed round of questions, Naomi. <laughs> it's very creative this week. <laughs> Thank you. So, Shelton, this is what your family, colleagues, uh, college friends, what this is what they really want to know about you, Okay. I'm in. Let's go. All right. So question number one. I even I might even make up a question. Favorite Tony's ice cream flavor? Chocolate peanut butter ripple, no question. Oh, that was quick. And very definitive. I'm sorry, yeah, that that one that one's all me. Sun drop or cheer wine? Uh twenties Shelton would have said cherry lemon sundrop. That's a common, uh, that's a relatively popular answer. Forties Shelton with a different metabolism would say cheer wine zero. Zero sugar, yeah. Because it tastes really good. Actually, you know what? I recently, for the first time, had a cheer wine zero sugar. I don't remember where, but it was, might have been at Honey Hunter's game, but it was actually, I thought it was better than the. It's really good. And it may be because I'm, you know, over 50 now. It's really good. So favorite favorite local restaurants. Okay, good. Because that, that, like, the one made me a little anxious because I've got too many. Um, Okay, Italian would be like Dino's in Bessemer City. Oh, Dino's is really good. Um, Let's see. Pizza, please don't make me choose between Joe's Touch of Italy and um, uh, oh goodness, I just it just left me. Um, Must not be that good. It is good. I just haven't had pizza in a little while. Um, it'll come back to me. It's in Belmont. Um, two two different ones in Belmont. I think pizza, like though, after listening to some of your other episodes, like Bellasinos, apparently I got to go to. Bellasinos um, is actually pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Um, Villa Roma is pretty good. Yeah, they're, 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 they're just they're goodness. near. Yeah, I'm yeah, not I'm not far from either one of those. Where, pizza's where about where you live. Like you got to find your be, favorite, yes. your favorite one. Joe's yeah. delivers. Um, I'll I'll think of the other one in a minute. Um, let's see. Um, best hot dogs got to be Tony's. Um, uh, and I, I'm not going to try to choose a barbecue restaurant because I think that would actually cause people mm. pain. Um, okay. But there are too many good ones to have to choose that one. Uh, but best probably best night out is Old Stone in Belmont. There's a Time limit to these yeah. questions. Old Stone and Belmont. I okay. I'm stopping. I'm stopping. Uh, Millstone's great. Well, there's several places in Belmont, actually. You know, um, Janet and I might occasionally slide over. Slide over to Belmont, yeah. yeah. How about favorite outdoor activity in Gaston County or favorite park? or? Um, favorite uh, outdoor activity would definitely be water skiing on, on the lake. Uh, being able to double ski on the back of a boat with – with my kids was oh, like cool. a personal yeah. ch- that I hadn't done that in years. Um, uh, hadn't water skied in years and, and was able to do that a few years ago and was like, Oh, this is great. Huh. Um, and then favorite park used to be Stowe when my kids were little, but now it's Carolina thread trail. So I don't know if that counts as a park, but oh, it does. Yeah. yeah. yeah I know we had the thread trail. You just mentioned one, a previous episode. We had the Carolina thread trail on Gosh, That was pretty early on back in the day. So I'm going to ask this question anyway, but I'm not sure. UNC Duke or NC state. I'm going to say Carolina. Thank you, Naomi. You know I'm going to say Carolina. It's my basketball team. I camped out and literally slept on concrete for tickets for four years. So I get it. Yeah, I did the same. Back in the day before they had the blessed lottery. So Uh, yeah, I did. I did that back in the day, back before your day, and 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 we were still playing in Reynolds Coliseum. But you know, we won't hold that against you that you said Carolina. 
We will pause for effect, though. <laughs> so, Shelton, what is something very few people know about you? Uh, I threw discus in high school, um, which I, I needed um, a sport. I'm not the most athletic of people. I enjoy sports. I enjoy playing things and doing things. But uh, uh, discus, nobody else was really throwing except for a couple of girls off the basketball team who didn't practice and just walked out there and slung that thing. But uh, one, we had a state champion discus thrower who uh, his name was, was Ben, and we jokingly called him Ben Hur because he looked like Ben Hur. Um, and uh, he <laughs> took mercy upon me and taught me how to throw the discus. Um, and I did not expect that. Yeah. I will admit that's very, very unique. So does that mean you're like a professional frisbee thrower now or I will admit in grad school we actually started um, on my, my seminary campus we started a um, an ultimate frisbee league that still to this day plays um, they actually play other seminaries um, wow so the ultimate frisbee that's legit yeah, it was fun it we've was done some fun. of that a few f3 workouts and the, the normally the plan is nobody get hurt that's normally the plan for all sports at this age Stephen. Yes. just be honest I'm, I'm there it's correct so how about a uh, book or blog, article, another podcast, something you could recommend, might okay. recommend to our listeners? So this one was a little little tough for me just because I thought, you know, I, I don't, I do a serious job and I don't love to go home and read serious things all okay. the time. That's all right. So if I say Office Ladies as a blog, as, a, as another podcast, um, which is... Office Ladies? You ever heard of Office Ladies? Okay, so my, during the pandemic, my kids got me into watching The, the Office. Oh, okay. And yeah, so yeah, we yeah. started watching that, and two of the stars of it, Jenna Fisher and Angela Kinsey, um, break down the episodes, and it's just pure. Oh, okay. It's pure escapism. I can see that. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Pure I escapism. Gotcha. It's nothing but escapism. So oh, that's okay. Um, but it's it's fun and it's. it's well, you know, what, so, uh, to your point, one of the reasons we throw these questions in here. Listen, we've had some episodes. We've had some pretty serious uh, topics that we've discussed because you know a lot of the work that's being done around the good work it requires some. I mean, heavy discussions and interactions. And so, yeah, that's one reason that we started throwing these in here, maybe lighten the mood a little bit on, after some of the, the some of the discussions that we've had. So, you yeah, know, that's great. I appreciate uh, you sharing that. So uh, we're getting, you know, got a few more questions here, uh, Shelton, and we'll wrap this episode up. So remembering that this is, you know, we're, we're trying to share all the good things happening around Gaston County, and there are so many, and, and you're a part of that. But besides Serenity Pastoral Counsel Counseling, why would you say, Gaston County is such a great place. We've got a lot of great things going, but it's the people. The people are just, this is just, this is home, and the people who are here are amazing. Um, after two countywide campaigns uh, with my husband and all the work that I've done for the last 22 years here, I, this is just an amazing place with wonderful people. I mean, you know, you, you've got, you know, We've, we've been all over from Cherryville to Belmont, from, from High Shoals to Mount Holly. Like, it's just, it, and, and it is, we have some amazing folks, and having door knocked, which is something I never thought I would ever do. Oh, wow, um, yeah, that's interesting. It was, it was fascinating and fun, but it uh, got to meet people from every ilk um, and, and got to hear what they had to say, and there are some interesting, really deeply committed people um, here, and uh Deeply committed to a lot of different things, but it makes for a fascinating place to live. And so I have to say that's our greatest resource. Well said, and I, and I appreciate that. So um, I think I say this every single episode. Naomi looks at me and rolls her eyes because it is my favorite question. So, Shelton, knowing what you know now, what advice would you give your 20-year-old self? Um, you know, it's interesting. I, I read that question. I was like, I probably could tell my 46-year-old self the same thing. Um just grow where you're planted and focus on on where doing your best right now in in the in the place that you are I think that's probably the thing that I would say I mean I think when we're 20 and this was really true for me it was got to decide on what I'm going to do got to focus on that got to get in the got to get in here got to do that I got to get this internship so that grow where you're planted do your best and enjoy the moment focus on the moment do your best but but also just be your yeah. best at where where you are and not always be looking ahead. Yeah, it's it's at 20 I know I was it's going to be better when or if um, the grass is greener so to speak or that um, I can't remember who's I think it's attributed to John Lennon. I'm not sure he actually said it, but you know um, life is what happens when you're planning for the future, right? <laughs> it's true. Yeah. 
It's yeah, if you don't, you blink your eyes and you'll have a um, senior in high school and a, a freshman in high school at the same time, right? Yep. I mean, I'm having two college graduates. I'm like, what, what happened? Where did that come from? So, again, I appreciate you sharing that. And, and that question has um, – I've actually gone back and listened to a couple episodes to make notes in my journal about some of those answers that we've heard from so many – uh, people some of them have been similar but there's been some that were, were not so um, again I appreciate you allowing us to in, in answer those questions especially indulge us with those Gaston County questions so uh, Shelton this has really been good and again the main point is to bring awareness to what you're doing and the organization so where can um, listeners go to learn more about you the organization anything and, and you'd like to share there um, I've got a, a website serenitypastoralcounseling.org um, and then uh, also, if psychology today is kind of a clearinghouse for therapists, and they sort of ask a different set of questions than um, the website sort of puts forward. So it's kind of two different sides of, of the, uh, the coin there, and all you have to do is just type in my name in psychology today. And, and there's also right some up. resources, I know, other resources on the website there are, that yeah. are good. So, again, so again uh, I appreciate that. So any last words of wisdom or anything you'd like to, to share before we close this episode out? Thank you for having me. This is um, this is just a great celebration of what we have um, here in, in Gaston County, and I love the variety of the things that, that you've looked at um, over cool. the years and over the seasons uh, that y'all have that y'all have done, and um, it's pretty cool to be able to to be a part of that. So well, thanks for having that. me. Well, well, again, I appreciate the work you're doing. I appreciate just you know on a personal, not just both, both a professional and a personal. Uh, level I appreciate you and your family and um, you know you're you're just a, a, another good example of of why Gaston County is is, is a great place so I, I appreciate that uh, very much so the feeling is quite mutual well thank you um, I'm not sure I can follow this one but I'm going to do my book and, and recommendation and maybe my quote or thought for the week um, as I normally do and I'm actually going back old school again I pulled out a couple old books lately but there's a, a old short read by a gentleman named James Allen and in fact, it was one of the first things I ever read when I kind of started my, what I would call my personal development journey maybe 15 or 20 years ago. But James Allen wrote uh, a book called As a Man Thinketh. And it's a, it's a good read, in my opinion. It's short, simple, to the point, just a good reminder about, you know, how you think about life and your own outlook has so much to do with how you view the world and what you're able to accomplish on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think I used a book. My quote this week comes from John Wooden, who I think uh, a couple of episodes pat back, I used one of his books um, as my book for the week. But um, he was just somebody I admire in, in what he accomplished and the type of man he was. But he said, be more concerned with your character than your reputation because your character is what you really are while your reputation is merely what others think you are. But, man, that's a hard one. Um, but, yeah, I think that's true. We can get caught up, um, especially in this world of, gosh, social media and trying to compare ourselves to, to others and keeping up with the Joneses, so to speak. But yeah, your character ultimately is what matters. If you can be, if you can get comfortable with your own character, then um, you're probably going to live better. Um, so maybe I'll get there one day, Naomi. <laughs> so um, to our listeners out there, thanks so much for taking the time to listen to today's episode. Please continue to spread the word if you can about the podcast. And please don't hesitate to contact us here at podcast at gastonsgreat.com, which is our email address. We're always looking for suggestions for future podcast topics and guests. You can find the podcast and subscribe at our website, gastonsgreat.com, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. And please follow us on all our social media platforms. And as usual, Nomi reminds me that give us a good five-star rating. Anything less than that, you can skip. Thanks again to Shelton for being our guest today. Gaston's Great is produced and brought to you by Naomi Hunt and Amy Anderson from GSM Services. I'm your host, Stephen Long. Thanks again for hanging out with us, and please keep coming back to hear more reasons why Gaston's Great. Mm -hmm.